Hi everyone! Welcome to the PVS Studio channel. As you may know, before 7.16, the PVS Studio analyzer already had plugins for IDEs from JetBrains. For example, such as Writer, IntelliJ IDEA and Android Studio. Recently, we added a plugin for another well-known development environment, C-Line. In this video, we'll show you how to install the plugin and try it on your project. But first, subscribe to our channel so as not to miss our future videos. Let's go! I'm sure someone started wondering why we need PVS Studio if C-Line already provides static analysis. Well, let's figure that out. The PVS Studio analysis and the C-Line analysis don't replace each other. They complete each other. This combo allows you to detect more defects even at the code writing stage. C-Line highlights errors immediately and after that PVS Studio performs static analysis and shows what needs to be fixed. That's the magic. By the way, developing the plugin was quite a challenge. We even wrote an article about it. Follow the link in the description if you want to read the whole story. Suppose you want to try the plugin. There are three ways to install it. From the official JetBrains plugin repository, from the repository on our website, and through the PVS Studio installer on Windows. You can choose what's most convenient for you. Let's look at each of these ways. First, go to the official JetBrains repository. Open the settings window by clicking File, Settings, Plugins, choose the Marketplace tab and enter PVS Studio in the search bar. And there's our plugin. Now click the Install button. Once the installation is finished, click Restart IDE. Excellent! The IDE restarted. Now you can use the plugin. The PVS Studio plugin is also available from PVS Studio's own repository. To install the plugin from there, you first need to add the repository to the IDE. To do this, Click on the File Settings Plugins command to open the plugin installation window. After that, click the gear icon in the top right corner and select Manage Plugin Repositories in the drop down menu. In the opened window, add the following path. Click OK. Next installation step is the same as in the previous scenario of installing the plugin. Open the Marketplace tab and enter PVS Studio in the search box. After that, select the PVS Studio for C-Line plugin, click Install and restart the development environment. To be able to use PVS Studio in the C-Line IDE, you also need to install the kernel of the analyzer and its dependencies in addition to the plugin itself. If, when installing the plugin, you use the PVS Studio installer for Windows, then all the required components have been already installed on your system. You can skip this step. If you install the plugin separately, using the two methods described earlier, you first need to download and install the PVS Studio C++ Analyzer Core for the relevant platform. You can do this on our website's download page. After installing the Analyzer, you need to enter the license number. If it's your first time working with PVS Studio, you can get a temporary license by filling out trial request form on our website's download page. To enter your PVS Studio license, open any project in the IDE. Open the plugin settings window Tools PVS Studio Settings. Proceed to the registration tab, fill in the username and serial number fields with the corresponding values from your license. If the license you entered is correct, the invalid license label is replaced with valid license and the license expiration date will appear in the expires field. Click apply or OK to confirm and save the license. Well, should we move on to the plugin settings? The settings window of the PVS Studio plugin comprises several tabs. Let's discuss each in detail. Settings. Settings of the PVS Studio Analyzer Score. Hover the mouse pointer over an option name to see a pop-up tooltip for that option. Intermodular Analysis. Setting that allows the analyzer to consider information not only from the analyzed file, but also from files that relate to the analyzed file. 
This allows for deeper and higher quality analysis. Note that the analyzer requires extra time to collect the necessary information, so the project analysis takes longer. Warnings. A list of all the diagnostic rules the analyzer supports. Unchecking a diagnostic rule hides all warnings associated with it from the analyzer output window. Excludes. Masks for file names and path to be excluded from analysis. Registration. Information about the current license. Once the plugin is set up, you can proceed to check code and manage analysis results. JetBrains C line allows you to open CMake projects. So, what can we analyze? The current project, items selected in the Explorer window, and the file currently opened in the code editor. To analyze the current project, choose the Tools PVS Studio Check Project menu item. To analyze the file opened in the code editor, choose Tools PVS Studio Check Current File. You can also select several items in the Explorer window. Do the right click to invoke the context menu and select Analyze with PVS Studio. In the examples above, all the CPP files from third party parallel folders as well as the sample CPP file will be analyzed. The PVS Studio Analyzer shows analysis results in a table inside the PVS Studio window. The table contains of seven columns. You can use any column to sort the analyzer warnings. To change the sorting order, click on a column's heading. Now let me tell you more about each column. The leftmost column, Favorite, can be used to bookmark warnings. Sort the favorite column to quickly find previously bookmarked messages. Clicking on a warning code in the code CWE column opens this warnings web page in your browser. This page provides a detailed description of the warning or potential vulnerability. The message column provides brief descriptions of the warnings. The position column displays files and code lines the warning refers to. The projects column displays projects that contain the file the analyzer warning refers to. The rightmost column, false alarms, shows the analyzer warnings that were marked as false positives. Double-clicking a table row opens the project file at the line the warning was triggered for. Take a look at the two arrow buttons above the table. You can use them to navigate up and down the warnings listed and open files associated to those that trigger the warning in the source code editor. Above the table, there are several filter buttons that sort the warnings by severity level high, medium, low, and fails. Clicking the search icon opens an additional panel that contains text fields for searching the code, CWE, message, and position columns. Each field is a string filter allowing you to filter the messages by the text you have entered. The hamburger button, the button with three horizontal lines across it, in the top left corner above the table, opens an additional settings panel. Clicking the gear icon opens the plugin's settings main window. The window is also available at Tools, PVS Studio, Settings. Sometimes the analyzer may issue warning pointing out some spot in code, but the developer knows that there is no error at that spot. Such a warning is called false positive. To better understand what to do with false positives, we recommend watching this video. And sometimes, when analyzing the project, you can face multiple warnings triggered by legacy code. Such code is typically well-tested and stable, so fixing every warning is not necessary. You can suppress such warnings by clicking the Suppress All Messages button on the PVS Studio window panel. To learn more about warning suppression, check out our video about mass suppression. To save and load analysis results, you can use the commands from the Tools PVS Studio submenu. The Open Report command opens a JSON report file and loads its contents into the table that the PVS Studio output window displays. The Reason Report submenu contains a list of recently opened reports. Clicking an item on this list opens the report needed and loads its contents into the PVS Studio output windows table. The Save Report item saves all the messages from the table, even filtered out, to a JSON report file. If the current list of messages has never been saved before, you will be prompted for a name and location to store the report file to. 
Similarly, the Save Report as item saves all the warnings from the table, even filtered out, to the JSON file and always prompts you to specify the location to save the report file too. I hope the steps were clear and you managed to configure the plugin successfully. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Do you want to learn more about other features of the Analyzer? We made a playlist. See you in the next video!